Let's solve leak code one to some, the most popular leak code question. So we're given an input array and some target, in this case nine. And we wanna find the two values in this input array that sum to nine. So in this case, it's two and seven. Now we wanna return the indices of these two values. So the index of zero, of the index of two is zero, the index of seven is one. So we return zero and one. We're guaranteed that there's exactly one solution so we don't have to worry about not finding a solution and we don't have to worry about multiple solutions. Now the most intuitive way to solve this problem is basically just check every combination of two values and see if they can sum up to our target. So we start at two, we check every combination we can make that includes two. So we scan through the remainder of the array, one, five, three, and check if any of those numbers added to two sums to our target four. In this case, none of them do. So next we can repeat the process. Let's check every combination including one that sums up to target four. So we scan through every element that comes after it, five and three, and we find that one added with three sums up to our target four. Notice that we didn't have to check the values that came before one because we already checked the combination two and one when we were up over here. Remember when we checked every combination with two. So we didn't have to repeat that work down here. We only had to check the numbers that came after one. So the runtime of this algorithm isn't super efficient. This is basically brute force. We're going through the entire array of length n, and we're gonna do that worst case n times for each number. This means that overall worst case time complexity will be O of n squared. So can we do better? Now the thing to notice is that for each number, for example, uh, one, the value we're looking for is the difference between the target and this value one. So we're looking for four minus one, which is equal to three. So that means this is the only value we can add to one that'll equal the target. So we don't have to check every number. We just wanna know if three exists. Now the easiest way we can do this, the most efficient is by making a hash map of every value in our input array so we can instantly check if the value three exists. Now let's try the same problem, except let's use a hash map this time. Now in our hash map, we're gonna be mapping each value to the index of each value. So the index of two is zero, the index of one is one, the index of five is two, the index of three is three. So let's, so in our hash map, we're gonna be mapping the value to the index. Now we could add every value in this array into the hash map before we start iterating through it, but there's actually an easier way to do it. If we added the entire array into the hash map initially, then we would get to the value two first, right? We would wanna check does the difference between target four minus this value two which is equal to two exists in our hash map. And we would find that two does exist in our hash map, but we're not allowed to reuse the same one, right? Because they're both at the same index. We can't use the same value twice. So we would have to compare the index of our current two with the index of the two that's in our hash map. There's actually an easier way to do this though. And it's a little clever. And let me show you how to do it that way. So doing it this clever way, initially we say our hash map is empty. So we get to the value two, first of all, right? And we wanna look for the difference four minus two in our hash map. Our hash map is empty, so we don't find two. So then after we have visited this element, then we can add it to our hash map. So now that I'm done visiting it, I'm gonna move to the second element one. And before I do that, I'm gonna add this value two to our hash map and the index of this value is gonna be zero. Now I'm at one, I'm looking for four minus one, which is three. I see three isn't in our hash map, but it actually is in our array. So what's the problem? Well. For now, we're gonna say we don't find our find a three. So we add one to our hash map. The index of this one is one. And now we move to the next element, five. We check does four minus five, uh, does four minus five exist in our hash map? That's negative one, so no, it does not. Then we add this five to our hash map and its index, which is two. And we move to the last value in the array, three. We checked as four minus three 
e, uh, exist in our hash map. Now that's one, so we see it does exist, right? Right over here, it exi the value exists and its index is one. So now we found our two values that sum to the target and we wanna return their indexes, their indices, which are gonna be one and three. So with this algorithm, we don't have to initialize our hash map. It can be initially empty, and then we can just iterate through this array in one pass. Now, the reason the algorithm can work in that way with just one pass is this. So let's say we had a giant array, right? We know for sure that there are two elements in this array that sum to our target, right? We don't know where they are. They're at some arbitrary location. When we visit the first one of those elements, our hash map is only going to be this portion of the array. It's only going to have the values that came before the first value. So we're going to we're going to notice that the second value that can sum to the target is no is not going to be in our hash map yet. But once we get to the second value, our hash map is going to be this portion. So every value that comes before this, right? So we're gonna be guaranteed that once we visit the second element that sums up to the target, we're gonna be guaranteed that the first one is already in our hash map, so we're guaranteed to find the solution. Now, since we only have to iterate through the array once, and we're adding each value to our hash map, which is a constant time operation, and we're checking if a value exists in our hash map, which is also a constant time operation, the time complexity is gonna be big O of N. We are using extra memory, right? That hash map isn't free, so the memory complexity is also going to be O of n because we could potentially add every value to the hash map. So now let's code the solution. So remember, we need a hash map, right? I'm going to call this previous map because it's basically every element that comes before the current element. Every previous element is going to be stored in this map. We're going to be mapping the value to the index of that value. So now let's iterate through every value in this array. We need the index as well as the actual uh, number. So let's do it like this in Python. Before we add this to our map, let's check if the difference, which is equal to target minus n. Now let's check if this difference is already in the hash map. If it is, then we can return the solution, which is gonna be a pair of the indices. So I can get the first index like this, and the second index is just i. Now, if we don't find the solution, then we have to update our hash map. So for this value n, I'm gonna say the index is i. And then we're gonna continue. Since we're guaranteed that a solution exists, we don't have to return anything out here, right? But I'll just put a return for no reason. Now let's see if it works. And it works perfectly. So with this kind of neat little trick with just doing it in one pass, you can reduce the amount of code you have to write and not have to worry about like edge cases and comparisons and things like that.